السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله we thank and praise our Lord سبحانه وتعالى since the last uh, short talk I have the privilege to share with you um, الحمد لله we have finalized the course that we were putting together on the fundamentals of إحسان الحمد لله it's uh, ready to launch uh, it should be available as a uh, fully asynchronous online learning course at uh, 400 level. That's a fairly high undergraduate level, but I think uh, accessible to anyone who has a basic background in Islamic sciences. Um, the course material is at a fairly high level, not the uh, not the access to it. So, inshallah, we will launch that on February 15th. Uh, there's a QR code on this uh, slide that you can scan. That will take you to a registration page and it will give you also syllabus details where you can enter your interests. So, if you will register your name and your email, we will get back to you with more details on how the, well, how the course will be run. But um, I wanted to in this slide at least kind of cover the basic modules that uh, we will have in the course so it's called fundamentals of ihsan and it will really will try to address the deeper connotations the vast cosmology of the meaning of tawhid of la ilaha illallah as i have said uh, numerous times uh, this is standard knowledge, traditional knowledge, knowledge that has been with us, alhamdulillah, we thank and praise our Lord, from the time he sent his beloved, the final messenger Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah, to earth. And the knowledge, of course, has been there from before, at the time of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, as Allah has mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah and many other places, that there is knowledge from previous generations that we should still believe in. So what Islam did, it took, it gave us the, the foundation and the framework. The Quran is a magnificent blueprint, a comprehensive map, a roadmap, that gives us the tools by which not just to understand the cosmos and uh, how the cosmos works as was taught to us by Rasulullah but also to be able to harness the, uh, the true knowledge that was left by previous generations. This is one of the great strengths of Islam that we know that Islam equips its practitioners with the philosophical framework and the tools necessary to find the good and take the good wherever they are. This is Hadith, hadith Rasulullah Islam. He said, wherever you find the good, you treat it like your lost possession, right? So this is one of the uh, strengths of the you know, Islam that we are very, um, very um, expansive in our philosophy. This is why we are able to live in anywhere on earth and still bring the nur of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to our surroundings, while we uh, while we enrich our surroundings and we are enriched by it, right? So this is why Islam is is very um, it's very varied. It's very beautiful. Uh, it captures the essence of the beauty of variety that you see in Allah's creation. As I say, you know, if you, if all the birds looked alike, you wouldn't enjoy the, the vast array of beauty Allah has created. This is a hallmark of Allah's creation. It's a hallmark of the way we used to be. So wherever we go, whichever society we live in, wherever we find true knowledge from the traditions of people who existed there before the advent of Islam, we were able to take that, sift through it, take what is true and leave out what is false. How did we do that? Simply because, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has given us this living miracle of the Quran, this, this uh, 
Quran that will never change. This Quran that is comprehensive and gives us every tool we need to be able to understand what is right and what we must take and what is wrong and what we must leave. So these, these types of, um, um, let's say, deeper core understandings of creation and of the and of commandment of khalq and amr and uh, the sab'a samawat the seven heavens and the ghaib very important the ghaib the unseen realms uh, it was very much part of common knowledge amongst the commonality of muslims for many 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 centuries uh, up until very recent times when we find that most common muslims uh, they may uh, they may recognize the words when you talk about the Malakut, when you talk about the Kursiya, the Arsh, when you talk about the Ghaib, but they don't have a true understanding of what that means. And even more um, dangerous, they do not have an understanding of how that affects their day-to-day -day life here on earth. Now, subhanAllah, we are living in times when we are witnessing enormous atrocities committed against our brothers and sisters, enormous destruction of the, uh, the earth, uh, its ecology, its climate, its, its nature, which we are meant to protect as Bani Adam. So we are at a time now when it is imperative, not just critical, imperative for us to regain this, this knowledge that we always had but that for various reasons we have lost. So I am enormously grateful to Allah that whatever I had of this knowledge from my childhood was not from my parents' generation, but my grandparents' generation. And that also because of Allah's blessing that it was not wiped out from them. So, you know, the generation below me and our young people and their children uh, very few of them have even uh, familiarity or have even sort of, um, you know, tasted or touched or uh, you know, even in passing the types of things I used to be exposed to when I was very, very young. This is before five years old, but it still stays in your psyche and your fitra is enriched by it. And then, of course, once you start formal Western Western-based edu education, all that is systematically eroded from you. So at Irfa, bi we glorify and praise our Lord and thank him for the enormous blessing that we have been able to gather that knowledge together. And we are trying to synthesize it and present it in a form that modern people, Western trained modern people, who who primarily uh, learn and study in the English language uh, can hopefully grasp and understand these topics. So it is it, it, it is essential these days, especially with what is going on. All of us, wherever we are, whatever capacity we are in, whatever capabilities Allah has given us, we have to respond in some way or form in the best way we can, when we see injustice, cruelty, this type of oppression prevalent in the world today. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for you to do that, I think, whatever place you find yourself in, whatever vocation you're in, whatever background you come from, it is wise and sort of common sense even, that you equip yourself with essential knowledge, right? So the, this course, I, I will not make this too long, but this course is trying in a succinct manner to synthesize all the vastness of our cosmological knowledge and present to you the fundamentals that you need to know from the Quranic sciences about how things work on earth right and when you know how things work on earth you you to know that you need to know how things work in other dimensions the spiritual dimension the malakut the dimensions of commandment you need to know who your lord is and how your lord's commandments come down and how your your uh, 
yearning and your interaction with your Lord, your dua, in other words, uh, how that will change Allah's qadr, Allah's uh, great plan, his great uh, predestination. So we are trying to take these, these sometimes very heavy and sophisticated topics and present it to you in a simple form. So we hope that is successful and you gain much from it. So in this slide you have, we have a, a, a sort of a summary poster uh, giving you the four main modules of the course, the organization of the cosmos firstly. And when we say cosmos, we do not mean just the known universe. What do we mean by the known universe? The universe that modern science understands that you know we understand from the Big Bang Theory. We are not simply talking about matter and energy. You know, in science, we have physics and chemistry. These are the mother sciences. Chemistry deals with matter, physics with energy. And physics, uh, matter and energy together, we say, constitutes the universe. Now, in our cosmology, revealed cosmology from Allah to his messenger Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only to Rasul but to all messengers who were sent to us. We understand universes and dimensions and realities beyond the known universe. And when we say beyond, we don't mean that this is the known universe. That is another dimension. No. Each reality permeates the other reality. Right? So the Malakut, the spiritual reality or the spiritual dimension, is always part of the Mulk or the sensory dimension. This is why we know angels all around us. We know the shayateen all around. Hopefully not around us. Hopefully we have too many angels around us for the shayateen to get close. But they exist in a dimension not apparent to the sciences that uh, measure matter and energy. Right? So the angelic dimension, though it has an impact on energy states, right? It is not energy. And though it has an impact on material states, we know the angels can take a human form. It is not material. So you have to understand these dimensions. Right? As a scientist, I always say, science is extremely rigorous, extremely powerful, but it is limited by the tools of measurement it has at its disposal. Science will only be able to unearth for you truth as long as it has some way of measuring a phenomena, right? Which is why we know, for example, before the Hubble telescope was, in, in, was in made, the way we understood the universe was a lot different. We, now we have the James Webb telescope. We understand far more about the universe. When I went to school, they told us there were no other planets except those in our solar system. Now we know there are exoplanets. Similarly, in, in genetics, in the 50s, 1940s, well, we didn't even know what DNA was 100 years ago until the tools came about to understand that. We got the number of chromosomes wrong until we had better microscopes, etc. So science is rigorous. It is very precise and accurate. That's something that gives us great sort of a foundational strength. But it is limited by the tools of measurement it possesses. So we as Muslims, subhanahu wa ta'ala, are the holders of the final, unchanged, uncorrupted, divinely protected kalamullah, the created word of God, which is the Quran. So that gives us knowledge far beyond what we can assess by our limited tools of measurement. Now, uh, there are then we have to understand who the human being is and why, uh, what are the faculties the human being possesses, so much so that Allah has elevated the human being to be in the state of Khalifatul Ard. What are those faculties? Those faculties, firstly, of course, is the ruh. So we need to understand what is this thing called the ruh? Is it part of the mulk? Is it part of the malakut? Is it composed of energy? Uh, we we are intuitively think there is no matter involved, but is it really energy or is it something else? Uh, what is it capable of doing? Where is it capable of going? 
similarly the qalb the heart which is the uh, the core of the human being uh, uh, spiritual understanding uh, what affects the heart how is the heart trained how is the heart diminished how is the heart hurt how can the heart die though the body is alive now i don't mean the physical heart i mean the spiritual heart what does that mean and what are these faculties that allah has put in us with respect to or in relation to the cosmos and how are we meant to use them and how does our mode of worship our salah which is the salah is not just praying it is a deep mind body meditation right now if i say mind body meditation some of you might grasp that concept easier than when we use the term prayer so the salah, how do the postures we maintain, the, the ayat we recite, why do we have to recite the Quran only in Arabic, what is the significance of those sounds in the cosmos, right? What do we mean when we say the Quran is uncreated? So when we recite the Quran the way it is meant to be recited, we are reaching into realms that go way beyond what we call creation and commandment they are going into the realms of the that the divine essence now what is the significance of doing that what is the connection how does it heal us benefit us and empower us now if you don't know these things you are losing enormously on what your salah should be doing for you subhanallah and then finally, we will talk in the fourth module about how we juxtapose, how we put all that we, we understand from our cosmological basis with relation to uh, ancient civilizations and the knowledge that Allah has been sending down through his messengers and chosen beloveds, his prophets, since the time of the first prophet of Allah, Adam. Our father, Adam, peace be upon him, salam. Right? So you need to understand all of this to fully grasp who you are. If you do not know who you are, you will not appreciate who your Lord is. If you do not appreciate who your Lord is, you won't understand the way your Lord is communicating with you. And that beautiful interaction, the message and the response, all of your life here on earth is only how do you respond to the signs coming from Allah. Do not think this is your home, right? You are here for a short time to fulfill a certain purpose. Now, these things should be put in place so that you also know how to adequately respond to current events, to events in your own family, your own community, and how to uphold the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How to enjoin the good and forbid the wrong. This is the role all of us have to play. And so, in summary, how to walk on Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Right, Sirat al -Mustaqim. What does this Sirat al mustaqim really mean? So this type of deep knowledge used to be very common. It is now rarely found. So we pray that we can, in, with the best way possible, bring it back to you in a way you can understand. So I highly encourage you to, to look at the course syllabus in detail. I have just made a short summary uh, and to sign up. The first offering will be, uh, inshallah, on, from the 11th of February to the 4th of May. So I had an error in the previous slide. It's not the 15th, it's the 11th. It will be fully online, so you can pace yourself and do it uh, according to your schedule and routine. There will be 12 weeks, uh, each module having three lectures. We will have assessments so that just to help you and encourage you, keep going and not fall off. Um, if any of you have difficulty with the course fee, please write to us at admin, admin at irfa.ca and explain your situation. We will always take that into account. 
So this is the first offering. Bidnillahi ta'ala, bi barakatillah azza wa jal. We hope to have more offerings of the same course as we progress. Um, but I, I encourage you very much to take advantage of your time before you don't have it. You know the famous hadith of Rasulullah wasalam, to take advantage of five before five. Your health before you are sick, your youth before you are old, your wealth before you are poor, your time before you run out of time, so your life before your death. Alhamdulillah. So I think that is enough from me. May Allah bless and reward all of you and uh, keep us in your dua. And I hope very much that I will have the great happiness of meeting you in this course. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa